the one thing everyone wants to know is when are you going to get to file in the U.S. and the U.K.? Yeah, it's a great question. Uh, we're working hard to do that, obviously. In the, in the U.K., we expect that that'll be our first filing. Uh, we did the phase three trial there, and that's those are the data that uh, we announced last night. It was, was confirming what we'd seen at the interim results and then uh, expanding it to, to show that we've, we prevent all severe forms and, and importantly, as you point out, uh, mild, moderate, and severe. So all, all along the spectrum. So we are uh, putting together uh, the data from this trial into a package, uh, and we have in parallel work on the uh, manufacturing side, what's called the CMC side. And both of those uh, we hope to go in, uh, in for filing with the MHRA, which is the UK equivalent of the FDA. Uh, in the second quarter, and and uh, and then it's it's up to the agency to uh, determine the timing of that. Uh, and would the U.S. be far behind that? Sorry, yes, you asked that. So we have a trial in the U.S. Uh, going in parallel, which we've which is going very well. Actually, we have got thirty thousand people in the U.S. where we where we recruited the thirty thousand people in six weeks, which was record breaking. We are now accumulating cases so that we can determine how well the vaccine works. Obviously, with the UK data and the South African data uh, in hand right now, we have a lot of confidence that the US trial is going to, mm -hmm. going to mirror that, those levels of data. So we have to put together the same package. It's, it's several weeks behind uh, the UK, and, and we'll put that package together in, in addition, uh, the same issues on the CMC side. So second quarter uh, expected to file it. Uh Great. Uh, one thing that also really stood out in your results was the lack of severe cases. It looked like 100 percent efficacy versus the severe disease, even among some of the variants. Why? What, what, what's working so well in that? Well, we think it's a combination. I mean, all, all of the vaccine makers are using the same antigen, which it's called, it's called the spike protein, which stimulates an immune response against that. And, and, and that immune response is what blocks the ability of the virus to infect. And, uh, but we, we, we all make it a little bit differently. And, and I think ours has shown, as you can see from the data, that, that it works well, as, as at least as well as others. But we also use a, an immune stimulant called an adjuvant, which is a very potent and, and safe, uh, effective way of, of increasing the immune response. How quickly can those kind of things be adapted for booster shots um, as the variants continue? Well, so we think very easily uh, uh, in, in, the, in the long run sense of things, uh, we have already started making the variants. And, and the question is, is, is uh, will, will the variant be used just as a booster itself or will we make a bivalent with, with, with uh, more than one strain? And we're working on that. We're, we're planning on getting into clinical trials this summer and we should know by the end of the summer uh, which is the best route to go. So it's, it fits our technology very well, in large part because we use very small doses. So you can make a bivalent or a trivalent. And as, as time goes on, we'll see what's really needed. For someone looking at the efficacy in South Africa due to the variant, it's much lower, obviously. What do you say to people who look at that and then say, ooh, ah, it doesn't really work that well? Like, how do we read the 55% efficacy? Yeah, well, again, you know, you saw that it was, it was, uh, uh, worked 100% against the most serious forms of the disease, but 55% is is uh, actually pretty. We, when we first looked at it, we we thought, well, how does that how does that compare? And then we looked at, at the fact that all of the people in our trial, 95% uh, of them, uh, were affected by the variant form, and this is a, this is a very uh, big diversion from what the original strain is, and so we think it's. Uh, it's good news that our vaccine can work uh, across a broad range uh, like the South African variant. Having said that, um, as you point out, there's, a, there's an opportunity to make that South African strain in our next version of a booster shot. I mean, it, it also seemed to think that what we learned in this study is that prior infections of the virus seem to provide some protection against the disease by the new variant. And that changed in your 60-day study to your 90-day study. Can you talk about right. that and how you attribute that to? Yeah, it, it, so it looks like uh, there's a there's a, a bit of a later effect uh, of, of prior infection of the immune response building up, and so so that's good news. And uh, and I think that uh, so it means that 
that there is some form of herd immunity. I think it also showed uh, that our vaccine uh, uh, works better and, and with a booster shot presumably would, would uh, it, it doesn't uh, take away the benefit of, of uh, getting a booster shot with a, with a variant, but it's, it's good news that, that it's, you see some protection later on. Um, just to broaden it out a little bit, uh, something that we've seen pretty much from all developed nations is vaccine nationalism. The U.S. seeming to want to keep a lot of stuff in the U.S. EU and U.K. are just going at it all week about it. Um, how do you deal with that? Well, we, we started dealing with it a year ago, and, and our, our strategy has always been to have a global manufacturing supply chain. We have, we, uh, even as a small biotech company where we were a year ago, we're not so small right now, but we have eight manufacturing sites in seven different countries. So we, we have the capability of manufacturing product in, in, uh, with our partners in Europe, the US, uh, India, uh, and, and two sites in Asia and Korea and, and Japan. So, so we, will, we will be, uh, we think we will not be affected by that. Um, the other set of news uh, that's come out is AstraZeneca and the concerns over uh, blood clots, et cetera, and countries cannot seem to agree on whether or not they want to stop giving the AstraZeneca vaccine. I'm not going to ask you to comment on that vaccine, but do you think it's, that criticism is fair? Like, these trials have been rushed. They are fast. They're also safe vaccines. What do you say to that as CEO of Novavax? Say, look, guys, it, it, there was a small group of participants, or is it something that we need to be a little bit more concerned about? Well, vaccine manufacturers are always concerned. Safety is always first, you know, and, and when you make drugs against serious cancer, life-threatening cancer and other disorders, you can have side effects on your on your drugs as long as they work, but that's really not the case for vaccines because you're vaccinating, in theory, you're vaccinating everybody, all healthy people. So we're used to having a very uh, uh, benign side effect profile for, for vaccines and, and, uh, and that's what our expectation is here. I, as you point out, I, I wouldn't be able to comment on, on anybody else's vaccine safety profile. Uh, that's not my expertise, but, but uh, I think everybody is attuned to uh, uh, safety. I think it's, it's, you know, when you vaccinate millions and tens of millions of people, uh, you're going to see people with, with different uh, effects. And so, mm -hmm. um, it's, and so it's up to really to the healthcare authorities to figure out uh, uh, whether there's a cause and effect or whether it's just correlation. Uh, a fair point. Uh, just wrapping up the segment, um, we started talking about boosters a little bit, and you're trying to get boosters, and you're testing for it, et cetera. When do you think we'll get boosters? Like, will it be the first quarter of 2022? When will we get it? Oh, I think it's possible to get it by the end of this year, in, in the fourth quarter of this year, and maybe a little bit earlier. And so it's everybody's everybody's trying to do it as quickly as possible. It's it's The good news is, is that the manufacturing process we use for our standard uh, vaccine right now that we call 2373, it's, it's, it's the precisely the same process, manufacturing process to make the booster. And so we've already made, you know, we made the strain within days of, of understanding what the effect of, of the uh, mutations in the South African strain were. And we started scaling it up at that point. So now it's a matter of, we don't have to, I don't believe, that we're going to have to run uh, new efficacy trials, long efficacy trials, but merely to show that the vaccine with the new booster variant is has the same type of immune response you get with the original mm -hmm. Wuhan strain.